hundreds of thousands of people worldwide are celebrating the 100th birthday anniversary of Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi, founder of Sahaja Yoga Meditation Movement and spiritual leader. Those who have not heard about Sri Mataji could be surprised that the personality of such stature has not reached their awareness yet. The impact of her work on humanity is hard to estimate. But all who are familiar with Sri Mataji can state that her work has and will have at all times ahead the most significant impact on the evolution of humanity as a whole. Since the beginning of time, human beings have been searching for answers. Who am I? Why am I here? What is the purpose of existence? Many great incarnations and prophets have tried to shed light on the human dilemma and urge us towards spiritual awakening. Like different flowers on one tree of life, they spoke the same truths but were bathed in different fragrances. Buddha saw enlightenment as the answer to our suffering, a thousand petal lotus emanating from the crown of the head. Muhammad also spoke of the Ru, a cool breeze flowing out of the top of the head and the hands. At the time of resurrection, your hands will speak, he explained. And Krishna, in his playful mirth, depicted the need for yoga or union with the divine. He spoke of the collective nature of man and the need for each of us to dissolve into the ocean of bliss. Christ also explained that salvation would come only through second birth. Forgiveness and compassion would clear the path towards this awakening which would be felt as tongues of cool flames crowning the head in a divine halo. I was very lucky that I was able to meet with Shri Mataji when I was about 18 years old. And uh, she was staying in Bombay and she was at that time the wife of the chairman of the shipping corporation of India. We'd, my mother knew her, so we went over to her home and my mother said, here is a special person and uh, you'll feel good if you meet her. There were not that many people. There were a few people in Bombay, they'd meet for meditation. In fact, when they met for meditation, uh, Shimataji herself would be there, sitting in front of everybody. But it took a few years after that to fully realize the power of the vibrations. Since 1970, Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi began teaching a small group of seekers how to meditate. She stood behind each individual and raised the Kundalini by placing her hands on the various energy centers along the spine. This was a natural process which awakened their residual power of pure desire. She awakened this power called Kundalini, which lay dormant in the sacrum bone at the base of the spine, coiled in three and a half coils. When awakened, it rose up the spinal cord, connecting and enlightening the energy centers. As it pierced the fontanelle bone area at the top of the head, they were connected with the divine. Although she was working with only a handful of people, she was searching for a universal method which would allow her to give this experience to large groups of people. She soon developed a technique for en masse self-realization. Taking into account all the different combinations and permutations of the human personality, the method was startlingly simple. 
The seeker would express his or her desire by holding the left hand towards Sri Mataji. Verbal affirmations help the mothering energy to rise and the experience could be verified by feeling the Kundalini in the hands and above the head. As more and more people expressed their desire to have this awakening, she began an en masse self-realization movement. We can uh, see from one point of view that human beings are created as human beings and uh, they have mental, emotional, all these sides. Now they are guided by their emotional side, maybe mental side, also depending on the birth and all that. So they are bound by all these things. We have within us a power, I call it as Kundalini, which is kept in the triangular bone, which is sleeping there. So when you awaken that Kundalini, she passes through these various aspects of her life and she enlightens them. Not only enlightens them, but she binds them and makes them one. That is where we become above all these things and we become ourselves. Since 1970, she has given enlightenment en masse in over 65 countries around the world, from Russia to Australia. In 1995, at a program held in Bombay, Sri Mataji raised the Kundalinis of over 100,000 people at the same time. People overflowed from the hall and sat in the streets. Unable to hear the lecture, they simply held out their hands and felt the joy. When I came to Sri Mataji, I was the child of my generation. And then, you know, with this sort of very permissive lifestyle that we had, uh, our generation, uh, then when you come to someone like Sri Mataji, uh, who is purity herself, and all your chakras are basically in jeopardy, all your chakras are more or less broken. And, and it's, it's really hard because uh, visibly, I mean, Sri Mataji was working on me and then she was going and vomit in the bathroom next, next, uh, next minute because my system was, was really damaged by the lifestyle, which was basically the lifestyle of a kid of my generation. But when she came and she told me what she was here for, what she had come for, what she was going to give mankind, what she was giving mankind already, then, you know, that was making the whole thing meaningful, the whole course of history. Then I was like, uh, uh, I don't know how you say this in English, écrasé, I was like uh, stunned by the magnitude of it all. Because just imagine that suddenly you get a big secret. You are your own master, no doubt, but you have to be made into it. Unless and until you are connected to the maze through this, unless and until you are baptized, you are not your spirit. Now the spirit resides in your heart. Nobody knows, you see. He resides in your heart. But you are not aware of it. When the Kundalini passes through these various centers and pierces through this one, then the seed of the spirit is here. If it doesn't work, we'll work it out later. The chakras are simply anatomical locations that are physiologically understandable by terms of autonomic nervous plexi. So this is the cardiac plexus, you know, the, 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 the heart chakra is the cardiac plexus. Um, the Vishuddhi is the cervical plexus. Now, what I don't understand is how you can get cool air coming out of your head. That's that's not part of my training. You know, there is no way in in allopathic medicine, in Western teaching, that you get cool air coming out of your head and as it goes past here, you go into meditation. The knowledge about this subtle system that is the Kundalini, about the seven chakras and about these three energy channels, all this is described in Yoga Sutra. What Shri Mataji has given to us, 
she has described how each energy centers they are controlling different organs of our body any disease is because of some imbalance in these energy centers the correction can be affected only with the kundalini awakening when this union of your own divine energy with the cosmic energy takes place then yoga has said to have occurred normally a person cannot stop his or her thoughts but when it, the kundalini gets awakened then a person is put into a thoughtless state and finally it goes up to the sahasrara and a person is feeling the cool breeze yoga or union had become effortless no more standing on your head no need for expensive mantras now it was easier to get your enlightenment in the heart of london than it was in the himalayas visits to the psychiatrist's couch were no longer necessary shri mataji was not concerned with the quantity of people but with the quality of the seekers she never took any money for giving or developing self realization and started sahaja yoga with her own resources to this day she insists that you cannot pay for your spiritual ascent so all these ideas about religion and god and all that must be again reformed there's no need to ring the bells or anything bells have to be inside 